what's going on in the price action right now? Now that we got the uh, inflation print, negative not point not one percent. It's going to be all about bank earnings. Earnings are coming in uh, Friday. Excuse me. Monday is Martin Luther King Day, so we'll have a day off. And weekend price action. I'll just let you know. I don't trust it at all. So usually we get a little pullback over the weekend. I wouldn't be surprised if it continues to run. Bitcoin is looking girthy and strong right now. And so it's very, very important that you have risk management in place. We did go over a trade setup last week, a long position right here with a stop loss right below the prior low. And we did say, hey, very likely we're going to come into this trend line, uh, which is coming in right here. Now that we've broken it, and we did say yesterday, hey, look, very likely we're going to get a short term pullback off the 618 FIB. And this is a daily time frame. And we tagged the 618 to a T right on that trend line. And I'll show you on the shorter term time frame where the pullback actually happened. It was just a short term pullback uh, right here off the 618. I mean, Bitcoin just looking really strong there. Just Heading on back up to the upside. So let me jump into my regular analysis here. What else did I want to mention? I guess I'm just going to jump right into it. And what do I start off with first? Whenever I begin trading, I look at the dollar. The dollar is the first mover typically. And when the dollar goes up, risk assets go down like stocks and Bitcoin. And when the dollar goes down, risk assets will party to the upside. I got my Bitcoin rally shirt on. We want Bitcoin to continue to rally to the upside. We're looking for um, some upside targets. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into it right now. So in the complex world of Bitcoin and macroeconomics, we are here to give you a bird's eye view from the macro level down to the micro level. We're gonna marry the two together and let them have a little baby and give you the best education we can every single day. I hope you enjoy the video. Starting off with the dollar, <clears throat> I will point this out again on the uh, daily time frame, and here we go. So the dollar did break down here pretty significantly. I'm gonna get rid of that green box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, and just give you the straight chart here, what we talked about over the past couple of days. And we said, hey, look, if the dollar breaks this region right there, that the, uh, the next target down was right here at the 1618 FIB, and very, very likely Bitcoin would initiate the two-day volatility explosion. And what am I talking about two-day volatility? And what we do is we trade, the way I trade is trend momentum and volatility, trend momentum and volatility. So what is the trend? Obviously, uh, Bitcoin is in a downtrend, or it was uh, significantly in a downtrend on the daily time frame. And uh, this would be our first trend reversal on the daily time frame. We got the higher high, we got the higher low, and now we got another higher high. So typically when you break a trend line like this, uh, you'll break out, you'll come back and retest it, and then move to the, you know, to the upside. Uh, dollar is now popping back up a little bit. So anyways, where is this price action very likely to go? And I'm gonna give you some targets right now. Also notice, we got the silver cross going right here. This is a very bullish uh, cross right here. That is the green 55 and the yellow 21 day exponential moving average. When those things cross to the upside, usually you're gonna get some massive movement. And I will tell you this also, the first cross to the upside usually does not get the move. It's usually the second cross. And we are just upon the second cross right now. And here's what I want to bring up here is that um, it's the two-day volatility momentum signature that we were talking about for months and months and months. And this is our volatility indicator. It's called the BBWP. What it does is it measures the, the width of the Bollinger Bands. And when volatility expands, you expect price action to explode. One thing we know in Bitcoin land is when volatility is low, it is going to expand some massive move is going to come. Now, uh, what we've done is some research, some back testing, some studies. And what happens is the average move when volatility expands and keep in mind, volatility is direction neutral. So you don't know if the price is going to go up or down uh, based on the volatility uh, read here. But what we do know is the average move when volatility 
reaches a very low level, and I would define that uh, define that as below five percentile, or below ten percent, below five percent for me. When volatility is below five percent, and then it begins to expand, the average move is thirty four percent upon expansion. How do I define expansion? Expansion is when uh, the BBWP, which is this colored line, gets above 20 percentile. So this two-day volatility expansion move is in place. So if the average move is 34%, and by the way, trend momentum, this is our momentum indicator. It's called the stochastics. When these things cross to the upside, momentum's to the upside. When they cross to the downside, momentum's to the downside. So when you get momentum to the upside, volatility exploding, you expect the price to go in the direction of the stochastics. And the, uh, the record for this move is that about 75% of the time, the momentum will get the correct direction of the move. I hope I'm making sense here, guys. Feel free to ask a question if you have one. And what else do I see here? On the RSI, we've got, uh, we're in the bullish control zone. Since, for the first time, since uh, going back to November 21, for the first time. And when we get into the bullish control zone, that's gonna tell us one thing, is that the bulls are taking control, right? So just getting on to our price action, the average move from the low to the next high, 34%, is actually gonna get us up to this line right here, I think. Excuse me. Um, so if we measure 34% from the low to the next high, that's 44% from the low. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to measure it from expansion and from where the stokes cross up. So right here is fair enough. Right here, I would say that's the conservative region to measure from, and I'll just mark this off. So this is where the stokes crossed up. We get the cross up right there. Volatility expands shortly after. And that is the full initiation of this signature. And if you've been on our channel for some time, on our YouTube channel, we've been talking about it for months and months and months. And it's finally happening. It's finally happening. Get ready. As long as the dollar continues. And in fact, guys, with the way the CPI print came out and the way the bank earnings came out today, I don't know if you guys know how much the banks are robbing us blind by taking those I don't know, the, the NSF fees and everything else they do with our money. The banks are, rock, you know, racking in the cheddar like never before. Their earnings are off the charts and they're making a money, a, a ton of money trading. So all those people out there with annuities that are happy with that four or five or 10 percent or whatever it is, the bank is taking your money and then they're going to go buy highly risk leverage assets and they're going to make a ton of money while you are sitting there, you know, getting nothing get nothing for your dollars. And um, needless to say, if we measure this out here from the low to the next high, 34%, that's the average move, 34, so 34% would take us up right here. Uh, and that is right at about 22,000. So if this, you know, and how would we invalidate this move? And that's, that's a key thing here with uh, technical analysis. Um, as long as Bitcoin is closing dailies above the breakout area, which I would define as this region at 17.8, call it 18,000. As long as we're closing uh, dailies above 18,000, I would say this move is in place and I would expect price action to move onwards and upwards from here. Now, keep in mind over the weekend, very, very likely, you know, we're going to get a little pullback, just my opinion. And the daily stokes will cross down, which this is the momentum indicator on the daily, up in the critical zone. That is not mean it's oversold. There's no such thing as oversold or overbought or whatever you want to call it. This means trend is in motion. Hold your longs. Wait, wait, wait until, uh, until you get those profits all banked in there. And it's very, very important you have risk management in place. In fact, uh, just a tick below, I would... You know, if I was in a long position on Bitcoin, which I'm not right now. Actually, I have a few long positions on Bitcoin, but um, not uh, on, on my main account. Um, so any kind of a tick below 18,500, very likely we're going to test that breakdown region of 18,000. 
All right, so just hopefully that gives you uh, some idea there. Price target is, and here's the purple 200 exponential. I would imagine we do get some selling pressure right there, and that's totally fine. So if Bitcoin wants to come up here to the purple 200, which I think that's probably where we're headed, put in a higher low right here, and then hit our target, something like that, that's what I'd be looking for. And, you know, this can come down as low as 18,000, right? Um, and I would still say this move is kind of in place. And however, I will bring your attention to the weekly time frame. The weekly time frame, a additional powerful time frame, which, by the way, we have our first higher low on the weekly time frame, and that's where the uh, signal was confirmed right here by closing above this little guy right here. We confirmed this is the first high, oh, this is the low, and this is a higher low, and that gave us a how many drives of hidden bullish divergence, bullish. Give me a shout out if somebody knows what bullish and bearish divergence is, if you have a question on it, um, but. Divergence is a very powerful tool in a trader's arsenal. And what is that? That's when price is making lower lows and the RSI is making higher lows. So you got higher lows here, one, two, three, and this is the three drive philosophy. So we have the three and four drive philosophy. Um, we got one, two, three, let's count them out here. Here's a low. Okay, there's a lower low right here. So there's one, there's two, and I'm just gonna mark them off for you guys. So hopefully you guys can see this. That's a lower low. And keep in mind, this is on the weekly time frame. Lower low, lower low, and lower low. Okay, so we got three lower lows in comparison to this low. And then on the other side, we've got on the RSI here, and I'm just gonna mark them off so you guys can see it all. Here we got 100 people on the uh, TikTok live right now. Right on. Because what do you think about Carvana? Carvana. Yeah, the car company. I'll pull up the symbol. What's the ticker? Um, happy to pull that up. But this is our three lows on price action in comparison to on the RSI here. What do we have? In comparison to this low, we've got one, two, three higher lows. So. This is called hidden bullish divergence. It's hiding somewhere, it's hiding somewhere, it's hiding in the charts, if you can see it. So you get three lower lows in price, three higher lows in RSI, and that gives us a target. The first target is the 21. The second target is the green 55 exponential moving average. So I do imagine we run into some selling pressure somewhere in that zone. The other thing I wanna point out on the five day time frame. We've got a looming death cross. So I don't know if you guys know anything about a death cross, golden cross, but something that is very important to know because some people think, okay, death cross, it means just going down. No, what you want to see on a death cross is you actually want to see price action sucked up into the cross, which is like this. You want to see it sucked up in this region and then spit back out. That is a perfect death cross. That is continuation of the downside. And if you are a you know longer term bear on the market, which I'm gonna be bearish on this market as long as Bitcoin is continuing to make lower highs on the weekly time frame. The only way I'm gonna get bullish guys is if we do and, and this is the first key. And by the way, you know this. This looks like a little double bottom, right? A nice little double bottom. Um, the only way I'm gonna get it bullish is if, one, we make the higher low, because a trend reversal is this. You wanna see a higher low and a higher high on the weekly time frame. So we've got the first higher low. Can we get a higher high? Now, would I define this, technically speaking in my book, yeah, if we take out 20, call it 215, That'll be a higher high on a closing basis. So you need to close the candle above that guy. That'd be a higher high. But really what I wanna see is a higher high above this 25,000, higher high, and then a higher low. That I'd be, when you get a trend reversal on the weekly time frame, I expect 12 to 18 months.
typically of upside up side, just like the same thing on the other side, right? Which the dollar's getting creamed right now, which means my long in Ethereum is going to work out. That's what I'm doing right now. Even though Bitcoin is leading the market, Bitcoin is being a champion of champions and I'm a long-term bull. Oh, look at that. What is that? That's Bitcoin dominance with a bearish engulfing candle. On the five-day time frame, it's going to close in two days. Let's see what the weekly is doing. Bearish engulfing candle. That means continuation of the upside. And that means most of your altcoins are going to get smashed. And um, that means watch out if you're in the altcoins. Maybe, um, yeah. So CVNA is the ticker. Okay, CVNA. Let's jump in it. I think I've wrapped up. So again, this is something to keep an eye on. As Bitcoin dominance goes up, typically altcoins will lose in their Satoshi pairing, right? Not necessarily in their dollar pairing, but definitely in their Satoshi pairing, altcoins are going to get crushed as Bitcoin dominance gets back up there. Um, and that would be a higher low there and a higher high. So trend reversal on the Bitcoin dominance. All right, let's get into CRV. CVNA. We got CVNA, Carvana. CVNA. And I forgot, what do they do? They're a car rental company? Yeah, so they, they're like CarMax. They buy back cars. CVNA yeah. stocks. So they buy cars and they uh, resell them. Kind of like CarMax, but it's fully online. So there's no salespeople or anything like you that. You know, I did one of those in Miami. I went to the Bitcoin conference, right? In Miami last year, I rented me a suicide door BMW and... Um, it was such a scam. The guy, like, I took care of the car, did it perfectly. And then he, he like, zoomed in on the, like, fenders and under the rims and stuff and said I jacked up the car. And this total sham. I did it on Torno. the other one. Torno. Turno. Turo. So, Turo. Turo. Yeah. And then, uh, anyways, what a sham. I'll probably never do that again. The, and the guy was harassing me the whole trip. What a nightmare. Anyways, um, I had fun at the conference. Carvana. So let's pull this one out on the, whoa. So this is on the NASDAQ futures market, CVNA. It looks like they're going to be filing for bankruptcy. Okay. Um, filing for bankruptcy. I mean, I wouldn't, any company like that, I, I wouldn't necessarily look at a long position. Do we have any divergences? No, is this as far back as the price goes to 2017? When you take out all these lows and there's no bullish divergence, hidden bullish divergence whatsoever. Um, let's see. Actually, we do have we do have a drive right here. Let's see. How many drives do we have? So what is hidden bullish divergence? That is when price is making lower lows. So let's mark these off. Price is making lower lows. So we got from this low here. Right, we got even from this low here, there's another low. So there's one, two, we'll call this two. That's more of a complex low. Three. So that's three drives. We got one, two, three drives, lower lows in price. And then we got higher lows in RSI. I don't know if you guys can see that. You might want to zoom in, but you can clearly see you got the same higher lows. Very similar to what we were talking about on Bitcoin here. One, two, three. So based on the three drive philosophy that we have, by the way, we have a free investor guide you guys can get. And uh, we have a free bullish and bearish divergence guide that you can download. I'll throw a link or you can click on our website, bitcoinadvisors.com and check it out. Uh, but if you, if you go based on the three drive philosophy, this does look like it wants to tick up and uh, I'd be targeting a move for a bounce up to the 21 at a minimum. You know, if I was trading Bitcoin right now, that's what I'd be targeting. And, uh, you know, how would you invalidate that? Well, we could pull it down to a daily time frame. So short term, probably a bounce, right? Um, I don't know how news driven this asset is. I don't trade this asset, but um, if they file for bankruptcy, yeah, I wouldn't imagine that's going to be good for price action. But if uh, everything goes well, and with the way Bed Bath & Beyond, I don't know if you guys saw that one, rallied to the moon amid crisis. And, uh, you know, so a lot of odd things are happening in the market. And as long as the dollar is getting shafted, right, 
risk assets are going to party to the upside. So this is the dollar. And this is something I just went over and I think is pretty darn incredible, guys, on the six month time frame for the dollar and why my thesis on the dollar is at a minimum we're coming down to 99 to 100 bucks. And that's going to provide a relief rally for risk assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum and NASDAQ. NASDAQ and S&P need to catch up to the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones is really really finished the last quarter very strong, but it's also provided gold, gold, which I think will be a great performer for 2023 and gold, um, putting in a higher low at this level on the weekly time frame, getting back in the bullish control zone looks really good. I think gold, the target on gold for us is at about 1950. Um, and actually I think we're probably going to head up to the top side of the range somewhere around 2000 an ounce uh, over the next couple of weeks. You know, weekly time frame, things are gonna take, um, you know, can move at a snail's pace. And I don't, you know, again, this isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I'm looking at on the charts. Let's jump onto Ethereum. Anybody else got a, a request out there? Yeah, they wanna look at Litecoin. Litecoin, another one I've taken some. They wanna know if it's worth it, So, you know, Forget about the uh, highly esteemed piece of internet technology, right? All the altcoins, you know, aside from Ethereum, you know, they're just a hope and a cry and the dream, you know. I, I don't want to throw any mud on the altcoins, but, um, you know, Bitcoin is, is going to be here the long haul. Ethereum will be here the long haul. Some of the big names, you know, maybe Matic and... Um, some of the metaverse coins. I mean, there's going to be some good altcoins, but in general, in a bear market, altcoins are going to get crushed. And Litecoin is only receiving massive benefits. And I've actually taken some very nice trades on on this guy. I think because the Lightning Network and people are, you know, hoping that uh, there's some kind of integration there. Don't quote me on that one. But uh, let's take a look at Litecoin on the daily time frame, which does look like we are putting in possibly a, a short-term high here, but I'm gonna try and make it so where you guys can see it. So is Litecoin worth it is the question. Now, we're coming into this wick right here, very similar to what Bitcoin just did. Now, Bitcoin usually runs first and altcoins follow. I imagine with the, uh, you know, the, the, the overall market taking a leg up here, I'm just gonna show you what happened on Bitcoin first. See if I can get all this, uh, clear up my chart here. So very similarly, you can see a couple of days ago, Bitcoin was approaching this wick, right? And we were talking about it on the channel. Look, if we take out the wick, if we bust on through there, very likely we're going to come up to this last higher low at 19,000 bucks. And now we are blasting through that level as well. So remember, you know, previous support becomes resistance, right? So now that we have busted through this area at 19,000 bucks, you could expect maybe a little support there uh, on the way back down, even this wick here and this area right here. So a couple of support levels here on Bitcoin. Anyways, I'll get back to Litecoin. Sorry about that. Jumping back on the Litecoin. So what is the main question? You said, is it worth it? I'd say if you're, you know, in a short term trade looking to long, uh, I would not hodl pretty much any altcoin right now in this bear market until we get a trend reversal on the weekly time frame. Once Bitcoin puts in a macro low, then then you can pick up your altcoins, right? But until Bitcoin has a macro reversal, I would not be holding any altcoins long term because they're likely to get crushed. So short-term target on Litecoin, let me give you that, and then we'll move on to something else here. Um, so very similarly, as I was pointing out, we're approaching that wick. I would suspect that Litecoin, if the overall general market is gonna take another leg up, you know, we could run up to a hundred bucks. And remember, a hundred dollars is one of those psychological numbers. So very, very likely, if we do take a run up there, we're gonna get some selling pressure. Additionally, we could support this uh, target with the Fibonacci tool here. And in more volatile markets, I like to use the wicks, right? So 
We just closed above the wick here, and this is a perfect trade setup if you, um, you know, wanted to target that hundred dollar level. Um, I again, I'm preparing people and clients like, look, over the weekend, I don't trust price action. Usually, we have a reset, and pr keep in mind this is the long holiday weekend. We got Martin Luther King Day coming up on Monday, so a lot can happen over the weekend. You got the guy, uh, the president, the president of Japan. He's visiting Joe Biden to talk about chips in China. Um, what else? Earnings coming up. Now that we got through the, the CPI, we got earnings. And then at the end of the month, we're going to have the rate hike. Um, but again, so invalidation on this move, any kind of a closure back below the green 55 at 7286. So I don't know how helpful that is. Um, I personally, if I was going to long this again, I'd be waiting for a higher low. So we got a higher high. You don't want to buy the higher high. You want to buy the higher low, like this little guy right there. Um, so if Litecoin wants to come back down and put in a higher low somewhere around here, or even as low as this guy right here, this would be the kind of target I would be looking for. And then a shot up there. That, you know, you what you could do here, uh, trade setup, buy there. Again, not financial advisor, not a financial advisor. Uh, and then a stop loss right below the 382 or below the prior low, which is right here, depending upon how much leverage you're going to use, right? Um, but spot trading this, I mean, very, very easy setup here. So long here, stop loss here, and target up there. Good risk to reward ratio. What you risk, 8% to make 36%. Uh, that is a nice four to one risk to reward ratio. That's all the time I got for today, guys. Any last requests? Anybody? What's the lowest amount of Bitcoin a person can buy? They want to know. Great question. So bring the camera over here. So a lot of people don't know this, that, um, you know, that, how do I explain it? So a lot of people ask, you know, Bitcoin is divisible by, you know, one million, one Bitcoin, one million Satoshis, right? There's a hundred million Satoshis. I, I don't know, but it'd be a hundred million. It's a hundred million Satoshis. So every Bitcoin is divisible. So that's the best part about Bitcoin is you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. Let me give you an example. If Bitcoin was 150,000, the smallest unit of Bitcoin you could buy would be 15 cents, right? If one Bitcoin went to 10 million, the smallest unit you could buy is like, 10 bucks. So it's very, very divisible to answer your question. And the nice part about it as well is it's a fixed supply. So everybody, everybody got to own some Bitcoin, right? Some get some, you know, and my, if you're new to this market, right? Don't buy anything, get educated. If you're new to cryptocurrency land, do not buy anything. Start to get educated on, um, you know, on our channel, we go over basic TA and fundamentals, and we will show you how to set up the charts just like this, because one thing you should have learned from last year is risk management. If you have an, you know, a financial advisor or you have a stock portfolio, right? Everybody got crushed last year. Most people are on mutual funds and retirement 2050, right? Or some kind of dumb annuity, right? Uh, you need to, have, all you got to do is learn risk management and a little bit of basic TA and you can save yourself a bundle and you can make a bundle. And that's what we do on our channel. We try and just be the voice of reason, right? We're not here to tell you to buy anything. We're here to tell you, get educated, and then you can learn about what's going to be a good investment strategy for you. Um, we do have a free investor guide at bitcoinadvisors.com. Hopefully there's a link in our description. I have my Bitcoin rally shirt on today. So, you know, I don't know if I'm a cheetah or I'm a leopard, but I definitely want to see Bitcoin party to the upside in the short term. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. Take care.